Alright, but like, what if he just dodged it though? What's up guys, I'm Hunter, and here we are to do a breakdown slash review of chapter 263 of Jujutsu Kaisen, which is known as the Zaisa Ballot in the Uninhabited Demon Defense of Jinjuku, part 35. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you, I tell you, when I tell you, I tell you, we got a whole lot to talk about, but also precious little time. Let's not waste any more time, let's hop right into it. Editing me, all are you ready? Three? Two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact. I do happen to... <gasps> I'll shoot. Ah! Have it on me. And keep it on me at all times. Hey, another fun fact. You know what time it is. We've got four minutes for talk about the character work, the plot progression, the power scaling, and the future. So let me start this timer for four minutes right approximately right now, and let's hop right into the plot. Once again, we're, 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 in, a, we're in a dual state right now. A lot's happened, but not much yet. We still fight in Tsukuna. You know, you know it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. I think we got a solid five more chapters in this boy. Like, like, even with what this chapter revealed, like, actually, you know, here's the thing. This chapter does have major pop progression. Number one, well, I guess that's the biggest one. The fact that Angel is, in fact, here, and she's about to send Sukuna to the afterlife with this big old Jacob's ladder. I guess it's the biggest pop progression. But the real calm, 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 something light, something light. Yeah, Sukuna, he's, he's, he's leaking. Like, like, finally leaking, like, leaking to a point where even though we have still yet to see Megami, like, the man's just not showing up. He's throwing up fingers. We have not seen bro throw up fingers. These are most likely the fingers that he consumed right before the... Well, not right before the go to fight. But, like, he consumed during the month time skip. Well before where he is now. So the fact that they're undigested, the fact that his soul is being sliced up so finely by Yuji and his dismantles... Yeah. That man, he, he in a little bit of danger, you know what I'm saying? He in a teeny tiny bit of danger, you know what I'm saying? Because the fact that he's taking damage on that level, on that heavy of a level, that he's legit throwing up fingers and needs to quickly swallow them back in order to make sure he doesn't just devolve real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's going to pull, like, a perfect cell and throw up Mega Man or anything like that. But I do think he is actually really, truly on the verge, verge. I know we've been saying that for months now, but, like, legitimately, he's he's looking he's looking kind of rough. And by kind of rough, I mean very rough. Look at that, man. Look at, he ain't even got a socket no more. Them, them tattoos, everything is gone. He only got one big old bulbous eye and these two bad boys. But the other major plot progression is obviously the return of Angel and kind of, I'll admit, the sealing off of Toto. Notably, Toto seems to destroy the remainder of the Viber Slap in his last attempt to bring Angel in. So, with that being the case, Toto doesn't have a left hand anymore, and he's already destroyed the Viber Slap. And he himself in this chapter is like, hmm, I'm not sure if my spare Viber Slap is going to register as my left hand with all the binding vows I made. Thusly, he isn't even confident that he could hypothetically come back into the fight. And thusly, he had to use the most of Wii Wii while he still had the chance. Naturally, that means, though, Toto's basically done. Does this mean he's going to live? Eh, 50-50 depends if Sukuna gets his hands on him. But I do think this is kind of the end. This is the final play Toto's made in the fight. So if you're going to do a ranking of how effective certain characters were, eh, it may not be that time. Because Toto's essentially wrapped up. Yuta himself, he's in an interesting plot position. His five-minute timer is not up. How much time has actually passed on that? Gig has been very vague. We have no idea how long it's been. We don't. We know that the breaking of the domains of this chapter isn't actually caused by the three minutes coming out. No, it's because Yuta's unlimited hollow, or hollow purple was so big, it literally just flattened everything, including his own domain barrier. And while it did basically nothing to Sukuna, it did destroy both of their domains, leaving Yuta in a burnout state. But that doesn't mean he's necessarily done. He is immobile for right now, but he's conscious enough and still has enough control over his curse technique and his body, or Gojo's body, to the point where he can maintain his Shattered Domain much longer than it realistically should, considering the scenario where his curse technique is quote-unquote burnt out. So this chapter really does have a lot of plot. Honestly, from the reveal of how Gojo how Kenjaku's ability works with Terse Technique Burnout and bringing up that mystery of why Kenny was able to do it, to Yuji showing off the dismantles that shows how weak Tsukuna is right now, to Toto getting his final boogie woogie, into the return of Hana smacking down a thick, hefty, juicy, scrundaliumptious Jacob's Ladder right on that thing's forehead. I think I do have to give this chapter, out of all the plot stuff, like out of this chapter just having stuff that happens that massively progresses or changes the state of the Tsukuna Shinjuku showdown, 
dare I say this, Chef and Loki got to be a 10 out of 10 in comparison. But let's move on to the next part. Let's move on to the character work. Now, this chapter, I will admit, is like very, very minimal on character work. And, and I'd say like even relative to a lot of the previous chapters, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have any. My favorite piece of character work in this entire chapter is twofold. Number one, I do like how Toto ultimately does feel a teeny tiny bit of guilt for showing up late. He's like, ah, I'm late, so I can't go down this quickly. My vibra slot may be broken, but my will is not. And he locks in even further and pulls out another clutch play, allowing Yuji to facilitate a mean wombo combo into that slide, leaning into the dismantled. That beautiful character work, I like that Toto feels a little something-something. He doesn't feel guilty guilty enough that it's going to hamper his fighting anymore he already learned that lesson when he got hit by the black flash but he is now so locked in even with the fact that he now is down a hand is about to destroy the last remnants of blue he again and just ate a black flash from the kim curses he's still moving forward i like a lot like a he look good he look good but speaking of so good so good ryoman suka once again, like I said, the Shinjuku showdown has basically been a Ryomen Sugata character exploration arc. Like, from the fight with Gojo, to the fight with Kashimo, to the fight with Yuda, to the fight with Yuji, to the fight with Ikuruma, to the fight with Maki, to the fight with Kusukami. Every single bit of this fight and the different parts of it, even if they're fighting the same characters, show a different side of Sukuna. And we see one of the pieces that we really get to see, or rarely get to see from Sukuna, that desperation. He's now realizing, oh, whoa, 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 now, now it's real. Where before, he would let himself take a little bit, oh, uh, damn it, let him get slopped around a little bit, not slopped around, slapped around a little bit. You can see by how he very aggressively goes to start blitzing Yuji again, he simply does not want to engage with Yuji anymore. He's like, I cannot take these hits. Where before, he was more than willing, and you can definitely imply based on how the whole Black Flash sequence that Yuji had a few chapters back in 240, not 240, I think 259, compared now yeah his whole mentality has switched up he like knows for a fact no i'm in legit danger right now and seeing sukuda actually acknowledge the danger and finally start using his stats realistically the stats that should have kept him from ever getting hit by yuji in the first place finally being enforced to acknowledge yuji as an individual an individual dangerous enough to possibly split his control and even rend apart his very soul using binding vows and his own newly awakened technique beautiful once again my main thing that i like about the shinjuku showdown is how it extrapolates on sukuna as a character not just as an antagonist who is playing the basic same antagonist role he played all the way back from when he was first revealed but in terms of a character seeing the different sides of sukuna is gorgeous and the last thing i will admit i'll just give hana her due credit notably i'm not sure how much of this is angel speaking i think this is only angel speaking but hana deciding to come in and risk it all especially after she herself kind of failed the first time is also a really nice character moment yuda admitting the power of the copy curse thingy is also cool but the main thing i like is because hana is a character who me and many others were kind of down not kind of i'll be real i was very down on and i really just didn't like i felt like the character was an entire plot device and for Gege to play off that factor having you to even mention yeah people think that once i take a technique it's no longer the original user is going to be a play faking us out by having hana wait so 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 long even after the guest character showed up to finally come in and pop out and while out like this beautiful once again Gege is fantastic at playing with my expectations for characters especially a character like hana who if you had asked me before this very chapter i'd say it was just a plot device introduced to the narrative to unseal santo to gocho so he could die that's it that's all i had hana for but no she actually did come in clutch up and whip that wrist in the kitchen just a teeny tiny bit now of course that's all the character work but what about yeah what about the scaling now once again i do think this chapter is fulfilling a certain narrative point a point that sugura yeah he's just he's just built different dog because i need y'all to realize he he ate the purple like like this extra damage that's on top of him this little bit of energy you see the little steam he's doing trying to force himself to rct yeah like he he ate the hollow purple now of course Gege doesn't show us the hollow purple launching off or like anything like that he doesn't show us anything because Gege is Gege and thusly we just have no clue how it actually went like inside the domain clash but he ate it sure his domain barrier got destroyed so it was enough damage to break his control over the domain he endured enough damage that his domain shattered and Yuta shattered his own domain from being too reckless with hollow purple but still the fact that Sugina face tanked to purple 
in a state where he's throwing up fingers from little dismantled soul tickles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's still just the strongest. And once again, this chapter does reinforce a narrative that I and many others have been pushing. The only reason Sukuna ever gets hit is when it's something like this and he's put in the mix machine where he really can't do anything about it because, you know, who can survive being put in the mix machine? I know I can't. All my fighters players out there, you know, every fighting game player out there knows what I'm talking about. But also, if he just really wanted to, even while he's this bad, even while he's hurling up fingers bad, look at this. Yuji just gets weaved and body slammed. This Sukuna, this Sukuna who's barely even a person right now. He's so close to splitting apart that he's hurling up actual implements that re represent his soul. And he's still able to casually blitz around and weave Yuji. Because he's still just that guy. He, once again, Sukuna's just putting himself at the top. And um, also, I'll give Yuji some credit. The activation of this new dismantle technique is very effective against incarnated sorcerers. But once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in this camp I'm not exactly sure if Yuji can harm the soul like Soul Spook Katana does. Or like irreversibly damage it or mold its shape like Mahito did. Because while this soul dismantle technique is neat, it seems like it's only effective on someone like Sukuna. And effective is very questionable considering how much damage the Sukuna has already taken, soul or otherwise, and thusly it's always the barrier being mentioned. Driving Dismantle into the boundary between Mind of Fushiguro and Soul. So I'm going to need some real soul damage from Yuji before I can start giving them some Duranag properties. Like, I give Maki all the Duranag credit in the world because it's just explicitly stated on how her blade works. Maito gets a lot of credit because of how his technique works, even though you can resist it with raw amounts of Ghost Energy. Unlike the Soul of Katana, presumably. But with Yuji, I don't know, I can't necessarily ask Yelmaski because, like, he's kind of doing the same things he was before and he's low-key struggling even with Sukuna gonna be in this week he's still getting whoosh, whirled around in Maliwa. those durability is crazy and we still don't know what these arms do at this rate i'm convinced gege is never gonna tell us it's been way too long since these arms have been introduced for us to not know what they do at this point which is crazy the final little bit of scaling i mean it's Impressive that Toto ate a Black Flash, but once again, the Sukuna's just that weak, so I highly doubt that the Black Flash actually means that much in the grand scheme of things for Toto being able to tank it. The Viper Slap tanking it that well, though, kind of goes go extremely crazy. The real bit of ceiling that's going to come in is how effective is this Jacob's Ladder going to be? Hmm? Hmm, is it going to be swole? Right now, Han is fully fresh. Sure, she's still missing an arm, and we don't know how much limb loss affects the potency of Cursed Techniques or anything like that, just because we, we don't really see it. But with that being the case... Is Sukuna gonna tank it? Is Sukuna gonna dodge it? Is she gonna whiff? Like, what's gonna happen here? Because there's only one thing left to talk about. You know exactly what that thing is. It's the future. So let's hop right into... Hit, hit me with it! Hit me with it! Yeah! Hit me with it! It, does, it didn't show up. There we go. Hit me with the discussion of the future. Now, the future is clear. In the sense that one of two things is going to happen. Either this truly is the end of Sukuna, which is the least likely future, or two, we're gonna we're gonna start to really dive into this boundary thing and really see what Megami Salt is worth. Because remember, the last time we were in the situation where Sukuna was getting hit by a technique known as Jacob's Ladder, and Yuji Tadori was right there in the vicinity, he swung. And he knocked on Heaven's door, and Megami Fushi Girl said, mm, Nah, I don't really feel like it. And proceeded to absolutely let everybody down. But, hey, you know, once again, he was sunk in darkness for a reason. So now the question is if Sukuna does get hit, and his soul does get spread open, or at least the boundary between his soul and Megami Fushi Girls is wide open and usually can reach back in there again, the question is do we have to drag Megami out of there? Is it less punching Perfect Cell in the stomach to make him throw up Android 18 and or grabbing Perfect Cell, wrenching his mouth open, reaching in, and then tearing out Android 18? I'm leaning low-key towards the latter just because I don't think Megami's disposition... Well, no, nah, no, nah, I would have changed. I was about to say, maybe his disposition changed because some time has passed. Once again, I'm still not fully conscious... I'm still not fully confident that that boy is fully conscious. I don't think he's even there right now. So I do think it's going to be a forceful grab scenario. But the other question is... Is Hana going to turn it off? Because remember, the whole reason Hana's in this armless situation or down in arm situation is because she turned it off. And Angel's likely going to be in her ear like, yo, 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 yo don't, just don't turn it off. 
Like, like, like just, just, it doesn't matter. Erase him. Erase him right now. Like, legitimately. I could, I could see a solid argument for Hana just not turning it off and Yuji not being able to interfere. Because remember how much of Yuji is impure right now. Like, he's still technically a Sukuna finger of himself, so he's still already part evil spirit. He consumed his siblings, which is more evil spirits, and he himself, he's got these weird freaky deaky little arms, which probably mean evil spirits. So it's very likely if Hana just doesn't turn this bad boy off, Yuji can't do anything. He kind of just has to sit there and watch Megami get fried. But of course, how fried is he going to let Megami get? How much engaging can he do without like actively risking his own safety? And how long is the Jacob's Ladder going to last? And how much is he going to do? Is Sukuna just going to flat out dodge it? Mm, maybe? I doubt it, though. I don't think so. I don't think... I, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. More Sukuna dodging light feats does not hurt me. It doesn't hurt me at all. But like that aside, I don't really see... Sugana dodging, and I think he is going to have to get hit by it. The question is, how is he going to deal with it? Because I'm still in the camp that unless we lead to an internal soul battle between Yuji and Sukuna and Yuji and Megami and Sukuna or a three-way, something like that, I'm not exactly sure this is going to be the end. That's the one thing I'm always concerned about. Because it's going to do something, but how big is something? Toto did something, but it wasn't big enough. Han is going to do something, but it wasn't big enough. Yuta did something, but it wasn't big enough. Maki did something, but it wasn't big enough. And once again, I believe it all leads to Yuji. So the question is, how is Yuji going to interfere here? How is Yuji going to get down and dirty and devious and diabolical with it? How is Yuji Itadori? The Prince of Curses about to cook against the remainder of the King of Curses, who is left in a dire, devious, and diabolical state through the work of Ao Toto, Yuji Itadori, and now Hanakurusu, the Angel of a Time Long Past. I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. And that's how I felt about JJK for a while now. So overall, I'll admit, this chapter is really, really good. Like, notably, I can't... Like, whenever I try to take points off a category, I do it because, like, either it's not there or it's contradictory. I don't think I can really take points off any categories. I think across the board, for future hype anticipation, for scaling purposes and seeing what this chapter does to the implications that come from the character work in this chapter, even down to the plot progressions, I think this chapter is 100 million billion percent worthy. But... That's what I think. Please tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you somehow made it all the way to the end of this video, please do me a favor and leave Ladder of Jacob. Yeah, I said it. Ladder of Jacob. Not Jacob's Ladder. Ladder of Jacob in the comment section down below. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you're not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as low as one. Cut them on, don't mind. Things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the 17 minute live reaction to this very chapter. I have very of all my videos. And if you come to a $25 Patreon, a $25 member, you can order whatever video you want. Also, 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 I do happen to have a link to my Ko-Fi description down below, where you can drop 5 beans for a short video, 25 beans for a long video, or any beans at all. Any support is always greatly appreciated. Now, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Other Pencil, writing off. Alright, lady, well, thank you to our three dollar members: Zena, Greyhound, Astro, Eternal Flame, NMA, Real Rare, G Prosper, Red Wolf, four seven six five, and Paris Arnold. Alright, lady, leave another big ol' thank you to our five dollar patrons: Sean, Sammy, Midnight Lord Twenty One, Kevin, and Carnacion, Josh Brown, and A Plus A. And I'd like to give a great big thank you to our $7 members, Autumn Mornings Lazo, Fine, and that guy. And I'd like to give a great big thank you to our $10 members, Robbie Uchia, Jay Warrior, and Akids Void. And I'd like to give big, hefty, juicy thank yous to our $10 patrons, Panda Goat, Michael Williamson, Metal Solid Crisis, Waki Munoz, Waki Munoz, and Idemokami. And I'd like to give the biggest, juiciest, meatiest, sloppiest, and heftiest thank you of them all to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.